photographer and I'm great news. I have finally received the SATA cable from MSI and I'm going to be showing you how to install a SSD on a, an Amazon SKU MSI G860 VR laptop that does not come with a hard drive. The most of the models come with a hard drive but the Amazon one does not so it, they didn't include any cable to connect an additional drive. So I have to wait two months for an order to come and deliver and I received it today and I'm going to be shooting a video on how to open the laptop and showing different components from the top. I'm not opening the motherboard since I'm not touching the RAM, the M.2 SSD uh, or the network card. Those could be for the next time. I don't have a budget for a new RAM stick or an M.2 stick now. But that will come in the future. Uh, I plan to upgrade the, the RAM to 32 gigs on this instead of 16 gigs and upgrade to a, a true NVMe SSD. So MSI advertises that the drives are NVMe, but they are actually SSD. So if you look at the model number, it says that it could do more than 2.2 gigabytes per second reads, and then I think 1.2 gigabytes per second writes. But in reality, it only does like regular SATA SSD speeds, uh, which is kind of disappointing at this price point. Most of the computers have proper M.2 NVMe SSDs, but I guess um, MSI cheaped out and got, decided to go for a cheaper drive. So let's get started. I'm going to show how to install the SSD. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to remove all the screws. There's about, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 screws. One of them has the warranty sticker. Don't worry about the warranty sticker. So I'm going to be using this set from Inland to open my laptop. I bought this from Micro Center and then it was about 30 or 20 to 30 dollars cheaper than I fixed it. So I'm gonna start taking out these screws. So that's all the screws and we can start taking out the the bottom. Now these clips at the end of the this plastic here that hold this whole bottom plate. When I was taking it out the first time I broke a few clips and it doesn't stand completely flush but it's easier to take out because it's really difficult to take it out the first time. As you can see this is the internals of the computer. We've got the, the CPU fan here, two GPU fans and then this is the battery the RAM is behind here. This is the networking card. So here is the Samsung Evo one terabyte SSD. I still have not opened it since I, ever since I got it from, I got it since Black Friday. I have an anti-static wrist wrap and I also have this connected to the, to my surge protector. The surge protector is off, but it's still connected to it. So it could help with any kinds of static transfer. I'm not super knowledgeable about that, but I mean, I did some research. There's like an installation guard, they even put a fan. So this is what I got from MSI. Okay, boom. So now I have to push these down. And close it. Let me make sure it goes all the way. Okay. I almost honestly don't see any screws to put it in. I mean, there are screws from the top. If I had a um, desktop computer or anything, this would go over here. But. This thing has a, a pad here that will go on top of the SSD. So they usually have this pad probably for the disk drives to uh, reduce any kind of movement and pad any kind of like, you know, impact. But since I have an SSD, I don't have to worry about that, but it's still good to have. This will do the job of my finger pushing it down. So I think that's about it. So a few other things I wanna note you want to do any kind of modifications to the RAM or to M.2 SSD or even the network card, 
I'm sure you could do it over from here. In the future, I might buy an Intel one. This is the killer Wi-Fi. I didn't hear great things about it. So, you know, if you want to change it, you can change it from here. I think you should be able to slide it in. If not, the safest bet is to just take out the motherboard. So there's like one, two, three, four, and five screws that connect to the motherboard. Then after that, it will come out and you can replace any, anything else. I wonder how easy would it be to replace the battery in the future? Because I mean, I do plan to keep this laptop for a long time. It was an expensive investment, so, you know, batteries do, do get older, but, you know, this is, like, glued here, so, I'm sure they sell the parts, I mean, it's just one connector, it shouldn't be too hard to replace it. Anyway, so, uh, I'm gonna put this back, and let's hope that it boots. Okay, so I put the screws back, so I will turn on the computer. So, the device manager recognizes it sees the Samsung Evo 1 terabyte. <laughs> guys so i'm just gonna continue it for my phone for now and my camera is starting to overheat it didn't really overheat yet it just started giving me the overheating signal so i turned it off now it's cooled down a little bit i opened the the battery compartment and pulled back the screen oh there you go it's back now so i'm just gonna continue it on my phone um it's still 4k in the end right um yeah it's just with the stabilization it looks a little weird and the autofocus is not that good. And also the exposure. Let me adjust it a little bit. There you go. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna boot it to uh, BIOS. So. There you go. So we're in BIOS. Let's go to storage information. So we get the, the built-in Samsung one, which is the M.2 SSD. That's 512 and my one terabyte 850 um, which is awesome so here's the weird part about the, the m.2 ssd that's on here it's connected as a sata drive it's not as a pcie i'll look into this because this ssd doesn't perform as fast as it's adver advertised if you go to the website and search this model the hfs 512 g 39 mnd this one does up to two. So uh, one thing I have enabled here, the window and FN key swap. Um, as you can see, MSI decided to put the, the function key here and the Windows key here. I use the Windows key a lot for switching workspaces and um, you know, coming back to the, the desktop. So if you switch it, it becomes uh, more natural, more normal. So I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna go grab, I have a USB to boot uh, Ubuntu. So I'm gonna grab that USB and then plug it into here and format the hard drive through there. I'm gonna be using uh, the SSD, about 200 gigs of it for Ubuntu, is that gonna be for my work? And the rest would be for video editing. It's gonna be, I'm gonna put my files there after I finish. I'm gonna transfer it directly to that drive. It's gonna give me about like 800 gigs of space. That's a ton of space to work with. And once I'm done, once I finish rendering and creating a final product, I put it in my external hard drive for archival purposes. So I'm gonna do install Ubuntu. I could have partitioned the SSD in the Windows disk utility, but I have to do this anyway, so I decided to do it through here. So I successfully created a partition for Ubuntu for about 200 gigs. Created another three gigs of like the swap area. Since this computer has 16 gigs of RAM, I don't think I'll be using too much of swap space. Uh, in the future, I will upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, but um, so far, 16 gigs should be enough. The installation is uh, going pretty fast. It was pretty smooth. I've done Ubuntu installations before, and I haven't created the rest of the partition yet. I want to create that in Windows since I'm going to be using mo using it mostly or if not only in Windows. Uh, I'm not going to be accessing that through Ubuntu. 
because all of my video editing, Photoshop, gaming stuff is going to be on the Windows side. So I'm probably going to form, format the rest of the partition as NTFS since that's preferred way in Windows. And yeah, once I'm done with this, um, I'll show a quick recap and maybe do a quick benchmark between the two drives here. Um, from what I saw online, the EVO SSD performs better than the M.2 SSD. Because I already checked the M.2 SSD, but it does not perform as well as on like an M.2 NVMe SSD. Although they, you know, advertise it as a PCIe Gen 3. Yeah. Anyways, uh, once this is finished, I'll show you guys how it runs and then I'll uh, show the comparison of two SSDs. So I booted into Windows again after Ubuntu. Um, in here I type in disk and there's a create and format hard disk partitions. You click on that and it will show you all your hard drives and different partitions. So I have already a disk, disk zero as my main disk. So it has a um, different partition. So C1 is where I have everything on my OS. And I have D, which is my, just for data, I have my games there, which I plan to move into the SSD. So I'm going to be using disk 2, and I have an app, like 742 gigs of un unallocated space. I have about 186 gigs healthy primary partition. This is going to be my Ubuntu boot drive. And this is the swap area and this is the unallocated one. So if you go to the action, go to all task, new simple volume, go next. So in here it shows how much space I have. I'm just pr pretty much going to select the whole thing and s assign a, a drive letter. Uh, I'm going to assign it um, W next. It's going to be NTFS, allocation unit is going to be, I'm just going to put a default and I'm going to label it as data storage. Okay, do next. Again, to double check, this is uh, uh, disk one, and then volume size, which is you know, 742 gigs, and everything is just Windows default. I go ahead and format it, and done. So now I have that disk available in Windows, and this is awesome. So I have total of my Windows drive, which is 280 gigs. My data that's in the M.2 SSD, 177 gigs. So now I have 742, so I can pretty much move all my games and Steam library stuff here. So I can have this part just free available. I could have it, I, know, I could store some different things in, here, in there. So I want to do some quick benchmarking. I'll show you a photo of that I have already taken a screenshot of the M.2 SSD. So this is my Samsung Evo. So let's go ahead and do a test on our 500 megabyte file. So the benchmark for the Samsung EVO 850 SSD is finished. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty fast. So that's it. It was a pretty easy install. Uh, everything is running really nicely. Um, I did a quick benchmark and the Samsung EVO SATA SSD is faster than my current SSD. I mean, it's faster just uh, by a small margin. It's not like super fast, but it's still faster. Uh, this goes you to show that MSI decided to cheap out on the NVMe SSD. I'm sorry, it's not even an NVMe, it's just a regular M.2 SATA. Apparently this computer does support NVMe drives, but you have to buy the M.2 SSD that is an NVMe one. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now that I have more space, I can do testing for the gaming performance of this computer. I have a bunch of different games uh, that I should install that I have more space now. And also video editing is going to be much easier because I have a lot more fixed flexibility as far as storage goes. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.